and I'm going to be using a lot of soft pastels. Use Sennelia, use a Rembrandt pastel, so there's lots of different types. You can see they come in little squares as well. Faber Castell. I think that's a schminky one. So you can see different type of sizes they are. They've got this paper around them usually. So you see me using lots of these different types of soft pastels, especially to get this blurred background. So I've folded my reference photo because this is the section I'm going to be working on first. And I'm going to start by selecting colours that are going to be pretty close. So I'm looking at the yellows. I need some greens, a very light lavender colour as well. I'm not going to push in too hard, but I'm using kind of little roundish strokes. Deposit in the pastel on there, trying to keep the edge of the flower quite clean. And then you'll see me blend in with my finger. Now, lots of you know I always say to start using a mid-tone paper. And 99% of the time, that's what I will do. But on this occasion, I'm using the white. And the reason behind that is I want this background and the colours to be very, very vibrant, light and fresh looking. And the best way to do that is to have white paper underneath. So it gives you an opportunity then to use the white paper. If you bought pastel matte paper in sets, you'll now get to actually use white paper and know when to use white paper on these very, very bright subjects. Now perhaps you could have a very bright background and perhaps then you've got a dark large subject, perhaps a wolf or something. Don't forget you could always block that in the wolf with some gouache paint so you're not fighting the whiteness of the paper all the time but still <clears throat> keeping the whiteness and the vibrancy there for a background. So you can see I'm just quite loosely roughing in, blocking in not concerned about the colours being absolutely exact yet because I can even adjust those with uh, pencils at later stages. Looking for a subtle green as well. Now, although I've got a really large set building up now over the past year, even then I still haven't got all of the colours that I want. So sometimes you need to make allowances and um, actually just use what you've got. So this is a unison pastel and they are very very soft and the Schminky make as well is probably even softer so these really soft pastels blend together super easily. Don't have to work at them at all. You've got to be a bit in mind though when you're using something very soft you can easily fill up the tooth of the paper. So if you're using them on a main subject that's where you need to be really careful. But when you're doing a background you want to deposit a fair bit of pastel down otherwise you're not going to get it to blend at all. And remember as well you may need to do a couple of layers to blend. So you can see I'm just putting in the suggestion of the few colours I can see at the top. And then make sure you've got a perfectly clean finger. I'm starting in the lightest area, the yellow. Little circular strokes. And if I want the yellow to push out into the colour around it, my circular strokes will go outwards. If for instance I wanted to bring the green down in the pink, my circular strokes will come inwards so I'd be pulling the colour in. So I just cleaned my finger on a chamois leather that I've got in my lap. A microfiber cloth would be just as good. And all I've got to do is just rub it along there just once and it's clean enough. It won't be spotless but nothing will come off my finger. So I'm keeping the colours fairly clean. And you can see that even though it's blending I'm definitely going to need to do another one or two layers on there to get that blend really smooth. So adjusting, putting on some more of that light pink colour, some more of the yellows, lightening areas. And 
and it's this very soft background that's going to make those flowers really pop and look like they're coming forward in the drawing with a, a three-dimensional appearance. Now I spend quite a bit of time testing up my colours, seeing if they're too dark before I put too much actually on there. Now that's what the little dots are around the side of the paper, just so I'm testing colours out. So they're blending away almost to nothing. It's not critical I get the colours correct. What I want, the most important thing, is that smooth blend. Now you can see how I continuously come back in to the pro to into the area, add in another layer, getting closer and closer to the appearance that I want, getting a softer appearance in there. As I said, building up layers of soft pastel will make it transition and blend much more easily. So don't expect to do it all on one layer. You see, I've just lightened the edge there with a very light yellow. I don't even know the names, numbers, or anything of the colours. I'm just picking them up out of my set. Something that looks roughly right and giving it a go. When I'm showing you these complicated drawings, paintings, the whole idea is I'm showing you the technique. They're not meant to be paint by numbers at all. I've got a, a simple tiger on there for that purpose, done with pastels, on my Patreon channel and also on video. So that's a good start, but these much more complicated ones, they had to show you the technique, how I actually achieve these effects. And now I'm going to carry on doing the same thing. You can see I've started off on the left hand side as I'm right handed. That means I keep the paper towards the right nice and clean. So I'm going to carry on blocking in, doing it, the exact same thing, just slightly different colours. And I'll speed this up as I'll do the same with the flowers, because as you can imagine, there's a lot of repetitiveness in the flowers in particular. So I'll really show you a lot of detail in quite a few of them, and then I'll speed it up so you get the general idea on the others as well. So a darker green in this top section, 
So that's a Rembrandt pastel I'm using. They're slightly harder, extruded, so they're in that perfectly cylindrical shape, but they still blend very, very well. And in a lot of ways, I rather them because they're not so soft, they don't actually go everywhere. So I'm getting the dark in first, I'll lighten it up a bit later on. And you can see I'm drawing around the flowers, but I am actually going over the edge ever so slightly. So I'm not stopping exactly on the pencil mark, I'm just going over so slightly, especially on the flower petals. And that means I can then come in with my pencils later on and get a nice crisp edge just overlapping it. I don't want to contaminate into the flowers too much. I want to keep that color pure. Because if I get a yellow in there and then I come in with a blue pencil, and there's a lot of yellow on the flower petal, it's going to go slightly green if I don't keep it fairly clean. I want to keep the freshness in this and use the white paper, almost like a watercolor, to shine, to allow it to shine through a bit more. So I don't want to go contaminating too much underneath. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, is on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go into something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com, and they will be copyright free for you, so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources, and I'll see you all again real soon.